Hi everybody, in this one we're going to be talking about the miscellaneous section. We're going to talk about arculation body. The arculation body is almost like a rigid body. If you have this checked off as immovable, when you hit play, you will not be able to move this. So um, let me hit play real quick. And then as you can see, I can't move it. Now if I have this and I just lift up my cube, now it will have gravity like a rigid body. And it also, you could also add the mass, see, it felt like a rigid body, and you will be able to move it. And then, I'm not sure what this is good for, but I'm guessing, you know, for bones, you know, uh, on your meshes. So then we're gonna keep on going. Billboard renderer, now if we go to billboard renderer and we click on it, and of course, while we wait, we're gonna remove this, cause we won't be able to show it and I'll show you why. Now there's also grid. Grid I can't show you really because you need a 2D game object. Now if you have a 2D project open all you would have to do I don't know if you would be able to do it like this but all you would have to do is for example create a game object and then you would add this grid on it and it would work. Now in a 3D if you add a let's say canvas I don't think it would work either so let's add uh, miscellaneous grid yeah no it wouldn't work but in a 2d game you would see this let me you would see this view and with the grid it would just add a bunch of squares and then you would be able to adjust the size of the squares and the gaps between if you wanted gaps between the squares right here it would be zero so all the squares would be connected and then you could change it between hexagon, uh, all these other ones, and you could also rotate them. And uh, what that would be good for is uh, if you wanted to paint your scene. So there's this option Unity has where you could paint your entire scene. So you could actually um, make your background and everything. Of course, you would have to make or bring in your painted objects, your painted sprites. But once you have your sprites, you could actually paint the sprites onto your scenes. You could even paint uh, a, a person or a character if you wanted. So uh, let's go to this documentation or we could restore it. I had all this stuff anyways. So as you can see, if we go to the billboard assets, this is what you need to create for the billboard renderer. Now it says to create it, you would have to use the speed, speed tree modeler and the speed tree modeler is up here. And it says it's 19 a month, so I'm not gonna show you guys. But if you guys do want me to show, if you guys do want me to show you how to do it, let me know, and uh, I'll probably you know get it for a month, and I'll show you guys how to do it. But as you can see, it includes Speed Tree 7 for Unity and Speed Tree 8 for Unity, and then of course it requires 2018.3 or later. So uh, we're gonna go back to Unity, and then we go back to our cube. And okay, so I talked about the grid. I'm um, sorry I couldn't show you guys, but if you guys do want me to show you guys a separate video about this, let me know and I'll be happy to do that. A real quick video, two, three minute video or something like that. And then uh, look at constraint. So if we go to our main camera and we put this look at constraint, we could actually activate it. Like I mentioned in a previous video with the constraints, you could activate it by clicking this button. This weight, if you have zero, it won't have no effect. If you have one, it will have full effect. And then you could use up object, which means you're gonna use an object to you. You're gonna use the world up object as the role. So I'm gonna leave it so we could use the actual role ourselves. And then uh, you could, uh, you have constraint settings that you can mess with. Rotation at rest, rotation offset. You can lock it once you're done. And then once you're done, you can mess with it. We're gonna add the source, just so I could show you real quick. And then we're gonna add um, our cube onto the source. As you can see, it kind of snapped onto our cube. And then, like I said, we could adjust the, the, the offset. We could adjust the, at the rest. And then we could just adjust the weight. And then we could just zero everything out, which would just pretty much lock the constraint settings. So that's that for the look at constraint. Now we also have the parent constraint. 
So we could actually, if we go into the documentation, it says you could parent constraint. Uh, it moves and rotates a game object as if it is the child of another game object in the hierarchy. However, it offers certain advantages that are not possible when you make one ga game object the parent of another. So a parent constraint does not affect scale. It, do, it can be linked to multiple game objects. The game object does not have to have a child or does not have to be a child of the game object that the parent constraint links to. And then uh, you can also vary the effect of it. So you could, um, sorry about that. You could actually have another game object and you could, let's say we, let's actually duplicate this one and then we'll move it. Now we're not gonna parent them. We're just gonna add this parent constraint. And then with that, uh, we'll add the source. And now when we move this cube, so we scale this cube, of course, nothing happens. We gotta activate this. Now, as you can see, we cannot rotate. We can scale it. We can't even move the position because it's constraint. It, but if I move this cube, I can move the position. I can move the rotation and I can move the scale with both of them or not scale. This one, I could actually have one be scaled while the other one doesn't, but they both rotate and they both move. So that's pretty much the parent constraint. So that what, what that allows you to do is pretty much parent a game object to another game object with actu without actually, you know, dragging it into it like that and parenting it. So uh, we're gonna continue. And uh, there's this position constraint. Now the position constraint, we could activate it as well. And then we have these constraints and then we could add a source so we could add uh, this game object again. Oh, we duplicated it, so it has it too. Let's move it over here. Now we could add this as the source. Now, if you, s well, I don't know if you've seen, but it snapped, so we could actually move the offset. So it could snap back, at least snap back into our view. Uh, now we lock it. Once it's locked, now as you can see, of course we can't move the position because it's constraint, but we can move it here, of course. We can't rotate it because it's not, uh, it has nothing to do with that. And we can't scale it because as well, it don't have nothing to do with it. But that's pretty much that for the position restraints. The weight just allows you to adjust this. So like I said, if you have zero, no effect, one full effect. Now I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add the, the rotation. And this is all pretty much same stuff. That's why I'm just kind of zooming through it because it does the same things. So as you can see, I can't rotate anything. And then um, if I go to this one, I could actually rotate both of them. Now I could only move one of them and I could only scale one of them, but I could rotate both of them. Now um, we're gonna remove it. Oh, I think this is the last one. Yeah, there's scale. Now scale, we're gonna activate it again at a source, same thing. And as you can see, it's scaled to the same size already. And then we can't scale this one, but we can scale this one. So as you can see, they both scale. Now this could be useful, I don't know, for platform games when you're making, a, I don't know, sets of platforms where you could jump on, where they move around, where they scale up and down. You can have it in script. While one, uh, when one is getting scaled, the other one gets scaled as well. Uh, and then, like I said, you could change the offset a bit. So if we go to the offset, you could change the offset. So now when we go to this cube, as you can see, it does not get affected anymore because of that. Once we lock it, they both get affected. But of course we got that offset. So now one's bigger than the other. And this of course works with the position and all the other uh, constraints. And I think that's it. I, I had covered the sprite mask, the sprite shape renderer, the terrain and the wind zone in previous videos. Um, when you go in the hierarchy, you can find all those in the hierarchy. So you can see wind zone, there's terrain, sprite and sprite renderer is for 2Ds objects. I don't know why they converted it into a 3D object. Maybe they're going to merge it all into one. Not sure. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If this video helped you in any way, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to see uh, the next videos of me uh, talking about all these components. Uh, the next one is going to be navigation. So there's nav mesh agent, the nav mesh obstacle, and the off mesh link. So check that out. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about physics 2D, physics, playables, all that. But that's going to be in separate videos. So thank you.